if I screamed again that I wouldn't be breathing. Tonight, looking deeper into the problem of violence against indigenous women and how one woman survived. We just want people to have like access to information, have options. Helping women prevent homelessness and exploitation on the streets of Montreal. As soon as uh, the men's fancy came on, my mom would wake me up, hey, they're dancing. I'd watch, I'd get my bustles on, get my headdress on, my rockers on. And passing a family tradition on to the next generation. Good evening, I'm Dennis Ward. We begin tonight with a story about a woman who met a killer and lived to tell about it. In this exclusive interview, we get first-hand details about what happened to her 30 years ago, how the experience changed her life. A warning, the details may be disturbing for some viewers. APTN's Tina House has this story. just outside of Chilliwack, B.C. This area is popular with locals who want to hike along the many trails. But for Dorina Green, it's a foreboding place. It's taken her 30 years to finally be able to talk about what happened here when she was just a teenager. Well, I was a 15-year-old runaway, and I was not listening to my parents and was staying with friends at the time, and... Um, just doing my own thing and experimenting with alcohol. She didn't know it at the time, but Darina then met serial rapist and killer Terry Arnold. I was at a friend's house and was just having dinner and then her uncle came over with his friend who happened to be Terry Ar Arnold. Terry Arnold was a suspect in the deaths of two young women in Western Canada. He was also a convicted serial rapist after being convicted of sex crimes against four children in Newfoundland in the 1990s. But his crimes go back even earlier. In 1981, 16-year-old Barbara Stoppel was found strangled to death in the bathroom of this Winnipeg donut shop where she worked. Another man was wrongly convicted in her murder, and he served 20 years. But DNA Evans later showed that it was actually Arnold who committed the crime. In 2005, Terry Arnold committed suicide at the age of 42 after he was let out on parole. He was never charged in Stoppel's murder. It was in December of 1995 that Green says she met Arnold. I just started talking to him and then he said he had somewhere I could stay with a school teacher. And so I went with him that following the next day and drove and ended up stopping at his place, which was close by. And that was down the road here at the trailer park that used to be there. And then as soon as I walked into the trailer park, in, or in the trailer, I knew that something wasn't right because the TV was on and there was a movie on and it was like a girl getting raped and um, there was guns on the table Green says she found herself trapped there was nowhere to walk towards but towards where he, he slept um, he raped me. I, I did try to scream and stuff, but then he started to choke me and said that if I screamed again that I wouldn't be breathing. <sighs> and I just completely shut down after that. After that attack, they got into his vehicle and drove up this road heading high up into the mountains. It's isolated and remote, despite being only 10 minutes away from downtown Chilliwack. And I was pretty much completely numb and 
didn't really know. I couldn't argue or anything. And, but when we parked, I knew that something wasn't right. We walked and walked, and then he pretty much brought me up to the, into the bush and told me I wasn't coming back. He had his arm around my neck, like, to choke me. And, um, I pretty much begged him that I would not say anything. And he told me some stories about himself and stuff that he can't go back, that he can't go to jail. And that he's done things to other girls. I just pleaded and I, I didn't struggle or anything. I didn't try to run away, and then he raped me again. And he let, he, uh, he let me go. No one will ever know why he let her go. Maybe it was because she was calm, didn't try and fight or get away. He drove her back down that mountain and left her with one parting gift. He passed me this knife, which was the weirdest thing. Like, and I, I didn't know what to do with it, like it was a switchblade, and he said this is to um, keep assholes away, like me. Arnold then dropped off Darina at the Chilliwack Mall and left. She then called police. It went to trial, but the judge said there wasn't enough evidence. In 1991, Terry Arnold also killed 16-year-old Christine Brown from Kimberley, B.C murdering her on top of a mountain near Headley, B.C. He was charged in her death in 1999 and sentenced to life imprisonment. However, he won a second trial after arguing that documents were not available to him during the first trial. Charges were eventually stayed, and after serving only five years, he was freed in 2002. All these years later, she says she still wishes that justice could have been served, before he took his own life. I do feel absolutely horrified and upset that those girls are gone, but I had to forgive. And um, I wish that he didn't kill himself so he, something could be done about those girls. Today, she's the proud mother of three kids and four grandkids. She has also immersed herself into art, which she considers therapeutic. She's also relied on traditional healing to help her deal with the trauma of what happened to her. And still to this day, she says she's still not really sure why she survived, but she's really thankful that she did. She believes someone was looking out for her. And during this interview, something incredible happened. The deer symbolizes my mother. I think of my mom as a deer because um, when she passed, I went up to her grave and there was a deer. Tina House, APTN National News, Chilliwack. What a story. A dozen people have been dangling from a British Columbia bridge in protest against the Trans Mountain Pipeline. That story and much more coming up after the break. Here's a look at Thursday's weather forecast starting on the East Coast where another hot day is in store. 33 under the sun in Fredericton. Sunny skies and 15 in Cartwright and Maine. The heat wave continues in much of Quebec but with showers. 30 in Montreal and Shibugamu. 33 in Quebec City. Even warmer in parts of southern Ontario, 35 in Toronto with rain, 33 in showers in Ottawa. Rain and 33 in Sudbury, 25 under the sun in Thunder Bay. In northern Manitoba, 22 under sunny skies in Flin Flon in the Paw, 25 in Dauphin and Gimli Harbour, 23 in Winnipeg. In Saskatchewan, 25 in Esteban, Regina, Saskatoon and North Battleford, 24 in Meadow Lake, Buffalo Narrows, Stony Rapids and Uranium City. Welcome back. 
Kinder Morgan has just announced their construction schedule for the Trans Mountain Pipeline Expansion Project. However, it may not go as smoothly as they planned. APTN's Tina House has the story. Greenpeace, along with members of the Coast Protectors, have taken protesting the Trans Mountain Pipeline to new heights. Two days ago, seven people, including Tsleil-Waututh Nation member Will George, scaled underneath the Second Narrows Bridge and rappelled down. This Facebook Live video was posted while Will is still suspended midair. Well, very excited to be here. You know, you could see uh, the, you know, folks behind me with their streamers. So, um, you know, I'm very proud to be here too, as well. A lot of mixed emotions uh, being here. With specialized hammocks, food, water, and cell phones, they say they will stay as long as they can to prove their point. They say that this tanker is fully loaded with Kinder Morgan's oil, but can't leave due to the aerial protest. However, Kinder Morgan denies that this has hindered any of their operations. So for now, the seven people remain suspended in the air, showing that they don't want the project to go through. Sarah Cadeau has come to lend her support and sing some songs. They're risking their lives right now to let Trudeau know that under no uncertain terms will we pay for a carcinogenic bitumen pipeline that will expand. And the same day the protest started, Kinder Morgan announced its construction schedule, starting from July 2018 to 2019. The company says 290 kilometers of pipeline will be built in central Alberta, along with the clearing of trees and surveying. In the North Thompson in British Columbia, an additional 120 kilometers of pipeline will be constructed between Mount Robson Park and Blue River. And then finally, further construction will continue at the Westridge Dock in Burnaby, the building of the Burnaby Mountain Tunnel and Sumas Tunnel in Abbotsford, B.C. For Will George, protecting the water means everything, and he has a message for Prime Minister Trudeau. This is not good for our economy. You know, this is not good for the environment. Uh, we, we hold the biggest risk, you know, look at this body of water behind us. You know, I, I think I mentioned you, you see, you know, people love it here. You know, that's why I do what I do. You know, hanging underneath this bridge, vehicles driving by, people going to work, going to their homes, going to their families, what they love, what they adore. That's exactly why I'm up here. And just as the story went to air, RCMP are moving in to remove the protesters. Tina House, APTN National News, Vancouver. And we'd like to hear what you have to say about this or any other story. Here's how to contact us. Send an email to news at aptn.ca, like our APTN National News Facebook page. Follow us on Twitter, at APTN News, or go to our website, aptnnews.ca. Some sad news out of Nunavut tonight. Police say a 31-year-old father from Arviette was mauled to death by a polar bear. It happened Tuesday night on Century Island in Hudson Bay. Relatives say Aaron Gibbons was unarmed and protecting his children when the bear attacked. Nunavut RCMP say the bear was put down by others who saw what happened. Police conservation and the coroner's office continue to investigate. Another effort to restore rail service to northern Manitoba has fallen through. It's another devastating blow for the town of Churchill and First Nations who had formed a consortium to purchase the rail line. It's been more than a year since the rail line was severely damaged. The current owner, Omnitrack, says it cannot afford to fix the critical link, despite being ordered to do so by the federal government. Nikki Ashton, the Member of Parliament for the area, says the government has shown no backbone on the issue. Ashton says at a meeting in Churchill on Tuesday, people were wondering if the federal government was waiting for them to starve to death or freeze to death. People in Churchill have had enough. They've had enough of Omnitrax's games. They've had enough of feeling as though they're being held hostage, and that was a word that I kept hearing repeatedly yesterday. They're sick of seeing the federal government share empty words of rhetoric or words that they feel are empty when there is no action. Winnipeg Transit says it's investigating after a bus driver allegedly ignored an unconscious Indigenous man 
lying on the floor and continued along on his route. A nurse spotted the man as she boarded. The nurse could not understand why the bus driver continued on along the route as if the man was not in distress. She called 911 and the driver pulled over so first responders could meet the bus. According to the nurse, the driver complained about the delay it was all causing on his route. It makes me nervous because what if I hurt myself on the bus and fell to the floor? Mm. I wouldn't get any help. Like people would just step over me or what, right? Like it was just really like that really bothered me, you know? Like Isque is Cree for women. It's also the name for an initiative in Montreal that aims to prevent Indigenous homelessness before it happens. Tom Fenario has that story. So uh, we have this bag of the Ishque project. And For so 15 years, Jessica Kiano has worked with Montreal's most vulnerable citizens. Now with the Isque project, she hopes to reach them before their situation becomes dire. Uh, that there's a lot of Indigenous people who come here to the city and they're not aware of all the services that are available. And we really want to do a lot of prevention so that um, men and women don't end up in situations of like extreme poverty or homelessness. Montreal's homeless population is disproportionately Indigenous. Many come to the city through its main bus terminal where Quiano says they can now pick up this care package. We have our little medicine pouch. Medicine aside, the kid is less concerned with the spiritual than the practical. A public transit ticket, phone card, and map with indigenous resources on it are just some of the items inside as well as a lipstick case that is not what it seems. So it's a lipstick but it's actually um, a little thing that opens up and there's all the, it's in, this one's in the Nuktatuk and it gives all the organizations to contact indigenous organizations. Those the reason for the lipstick container's discreetness is to keep it hidden first. from prying eyes. Um, Keanu says indigenous women right. are too often targeted by abusers and pimps. So, a lot of the times I find that people don't necessarily know the resources and it's really unfortunate. The guidebook located in the bag has a non-judgmental section on sex work. It emphasizes how women should get out if they are being abused or exploited before it's too late. Do you, uh, not really. Siasi Tologak was 27 when she died last August. The Inuk woman from Pavernatuk in northern Quebec had been living in Montreal for only four and a half months. She fell into drug addiction and the sex trade before her violent death. <laughs> At this vigil for Siasi, many spoke of the toll Montreal streets are taking on vulnerable Inuit. Look after yourself. It's enough. Enough is enough. Originally from Manitoba, Debai is a Plains Cree outreach worker. He's one of the people listed in the Isque pamphlet. He says Montreal can be a tough city to navigate when coming from a smaller community, and he intends to hand out the Isque kit to many of his clients. I'm here to help facilitate um, and um, help this uh, transition and also maybe make the community stronger and more educated. As someone who knew Siasi Tulagak, Kiano hopes the kit can save lives. We just want people to have like access to information, have options, because a lot of the times I find that people don't necessarily know the resources and it's really unfortunate. The Isque Project Toolkit hopes to eventually expand to the airport. For now, it can be found at the bus station and with outreach workers on the streets. Tom Fenario, APTN National News, Montreal. Smart idea. Time for a quick break and then a story brought to you and us by students from the First Nation University of Canada. Here's a look at the rest of Thursday's weather forecast, peaking back up in northern Alberta. 25 under sunny skies in Peace River and Grand Prairie. 29 in Medicine Hat, 28 in Lethbridge. Things are heating up in the BC interior. 32 under the sun in Kamloops and Penticton. 25 in Prince George, Smithers and Fort St. John in the Yukon. 22 for Dawson City and Mayo. Warming up in NWT, 28 in Fort Liard, 27 in Fort Simpson and Wrigley. Much cooler to the north, plus 2 in Saks Harbor, a cloudy high of 7 above in Politak in Nunavut, 19 for RVS and Whale Cove, 12 in Cape Dorset, 9 in Iqaluit, plus 2 in Resolute. Welcome back. 
Now to a story brought to you by students at the First Nation University of Canada. We're taking the Indian Communication Arts Summer Institute program. Met a well-known fancy dancer in Regina who gets his inspiration from his father. This is the story of a youth who dreamed of being a champion fancy dancer, like his father. You, you know, in a non-Indigenous world, you have these rock stars, you have all these people that you look up to. To us Indian kids, you want to be a men's fancy dancer. Langan Goforth is starting a new job. His role is to lead the University of Regina to indigenization. He is the first cultural and traditional knowledge keeper at the university. My job is to assist the faculty, staff, students um, in bringing indigenous content into the classroom. I follow protocol, uh, what I was taught uh, from my my family, from my elders, and I, I use all those teachings and I bring all of those teachings to my job here. But this is not his only job. Goforth is a famous fancy dancer. He travels the international powwow circuit. He's proud to showcase his culture to the world. And that bond still exists at the First Nations Gallery because Les Goforth has been immortalized there for 25 years. That's my dad. It's a lifelike, I guess, mold of who my dad was. Uh, it's his face, it's his body, and he's uh, in a traditional dance, menstruational dance uh, regalia. One of his fondest memories was waiting for the chance to dance with his father. You know, I think I was seven, eight years old, I'd fall asleep with my outfit on, as soon as uh, the men's fancy came on, my mom would wake me up, hey, they're dancing. I'd watch, I'd get my bustles on, get my headdress on, my rockers on, wait for that special song, and then I'd go out and I'd dance. And you know, um, that's where I, I enjoyed my time, dancing with dad, I was dancing with my father. And I, you know, I grew up doing that for my junior years, my teen years. Uh, into my adult ears, and it's something that I do to this day. Although his father is no longer alive, Goforth continues to feel his influence today. When I get lonely, you know, when I want to reminisce and uh, think about, you know, some of the teachings or just, you know, everyday questions that I may have in life, being a father myself, it's almost like he's alive as well here physically. I can come here, I can talk to him. You know, a lot of people um, that looked up to him, they come here. He'll come here and there'll be tobacco offered here at, at the display. He'll come here and you'll see maybe uh, a bowl of soup, maybe some berries that are offered. So, you know, uh, him being on display here, his outfit, it's a reminder about who I am and, and about, you know, uh, my family. And it's just like he's not gone. Our thanks to the students at First Nation University for that story. That's your APTN National News for this Wednesday. For news anytime, including more on the man left unconscious on a Winnipeg bus and that protest on the BC Bridge, visit our website, aptnnews.ca. I'm Dennis Ward. Have a great night. We'll see you back here tomorrow.